I like to make a lot of videos with tips for beginners. Stardew is an intricate game, and I try to ease the intimidation just a bit. This, however, is not one of those videos. A lot of us have been around the block, and a lot of players are experiencing the extra 1.5 update content now that it's on mobile. So today, we're going to be talking about those late game tips to help you work towards the perfection rating of the game, and also focus on Ginger Island just a little bit. Spoilers for 1.5 content, of course. Once you unlock the beach resort, villagers will start to visit the island at random. This can be annoying because sometimes they won't tend to their shops or they just won't be on their regular schedules if you're trying to find them to give them gifts. You can turn that off by interacting with this plaque here. This will close it down temporarily until you interact with it again. If you're having trouble finishing up the museum, explore some tasks that you haven't done before. Each geode has different minerals, artifact spots in different areas have different items, and some can even be found from fishing or as monster drops in the Skull Cavern. Now you've probably heard that you can use the quarry for things other than just getting ore. You can place kegs here, of course, but there's a few other areas that you probably haven't been utilizing. For example, no NPCs ever go through the backwoods, so you can put as many machines back here as you want. Same thing goes for the desert. I like to use it as a huge tree farm. Here is a tip for my decorators. I'm adding decorating tips just because it can help alleviate the boredom when walking around. There's some areas that you might have not thought to decorate before, such as... The farm cave. If you chose the mushroom cave, decorating won't affect your spawn rates at all. You could also make the entrance to the mines like a second base since you're going to be coming back here so much. Now, we all love bin maxing, but if you really want to take it to the next level, you can set up a whole line of chairs, say, oh, you could go from the warp to the desert all the way up to the skull cavern, and no time passes whenever you're jumping onto a chair and off of a chair, so... You could just make up a line of chairs and almost no time will pass the entire time you're going down it because it keeps pausing. So there's another min-max for you if you really want to set it up. Really quick, here's all of my picks for the best tool enchantments. The pickaxe has swift, which speeds up swinging speed. For the axe, it's shaving, which gives extra wood from trees and a chance of extra crops from giant crops. For the fishing rod, it's master, which just gives you a free extra fishing level. For the hoe, I'm kind of torn between archaeologist and generous. Generous gives you a 50% chance to double all items gotten from digging, which can be good for amassing a lot of omnigeodes, for example but Archaeologist gives a double chance of finding artifacts in an artifact spots, which helps a lot when you're searching for a specific item, like the skeleton parts on Ginger Island. And for the watering can, bottomless. You'll never have to refill it again. Then for enchantments for weapons, for the dagger, I like Artful, which halves your cooldown for your special move. For the club, Artful again, which is especially powerful when combined with the exploit that allows the special move to hit a lot of times by just mashing the attack button when you do the special move. And for the sword, it's a bit more complicated. I like Vampiric because it gives you a chance to regain health on a kill and it pairs well with the sword being one of the more defensive weapons already with a defensive special and having more range than most of the other weapons. Haymaker could also be useful, which gives you a chance to get fiber whenever you're cutting hay. You know, if you were doing some kind of weird challenge where you were only allowed to sell fiber for profit, but that'd be weird. There's a lot of money to be made on the way to perfection, and just in case you didn't know already, the best money maker in the game is either Starfruit or Ancient Fruit Wine. Starfruit has a little less profit, but it doesn't take much time to set up. Ancient Fruit, on the other hand, is technically your best choice, but you have to take a while to set it up since you can only get it from putting Ancient Fruit into seed makers. With that being said, don't be afraid to diversify. There's many other good money-making methods in the game, such as getting truffles. Yes, my animals love me, don't ask about it. They don't all even have to be super efficient. Just anything that takes away the monotony of growing the same crop over and over again for years in game. Most people know that the crane game has exclusive decoration items, but did you know that there's sometimes hidden items behind the bush? This bush in the top right can sometimes have extra movie tickets behind it. There we go, first try. And this bush in the bottom left can very rarely have dinosaur eggs, which can be a nice last resort if you're just having absolutely no luck finding them. A good way to essentially have access to the return scepter before you're able to afford it is to spend some time gambling in the casino. If you didn't know, you're basically always guaranteed to gain money in the long haul. 
Once you've made some coins, go and cash them in for a bunch of farm warp totems. A little bit of time in here and you should be able to get a few dozen. A lot of people like to show off their farm designs by taking a screenshot of the entire place. If you don't know how to do this, go to options, scroll all the way to the bottom, and then press the screenshot button. This can also be a good way of finding forageable items or supply crates around your farm without having to walk around and get them. This is another aesthetic one. You can just design sheds for fun. They don't all have to be full of kegs and stuff. Here I have my little aquarium and I have another that's island themed with a bunch of potted pineapples. These can make me a little bit of money, but it's mostly for fun. If you find yourself still getting bored on the way to perfection, if you're on PC, try adding some mods. There's a bunch of aesthetic mods that won't change anything gameplay wise, or if you're looking to make the path to perfection a little bit easier, something like the automate mod or the tractor mod might be for you. Sometimes special orders will ask you to collect a bunch of wood or stone in a small amount of time. If you collect these items from a deconstructor, they will count as collected for that special order. So you could just keep crafting chests or stone walls over and over again and deconstructing them and there's your entire special order. This also works with the help wanted board if Clint asks for copper ore or something. Now. This really has nothing to do with working towards perfection, but it can make your co-op playthroughs a bit more fun. Some of the best emotes in the entire game aren't accessible through anything except chat commands. These hidden emotes are taunt, a, uh, music, and jar. Use at your own risk. The fruits on trees increase in quality every single year, so if you've had some fruit trees planted for a really long time, they might be earning you a bit more than they used to. Surprisingly, fish ponds can be useful. One of my favorites is the Stingray Pond, which has a decent chance to give many hard to find items like magma caps, dragon teeth, cinder shards, and battery packs. Now, I noticed that this is a common problem with a lot of people looking for the last few golden walnuts, if you don't have them all and the parrot won't give you any hints, there's three possible places it could be. First, it could be the three walnuts you get from giving a banana to the banana stand. If these torches aren't lit, you have not done it yet. It could be the golden walnut bush hidden at the bottom of this screen to the right of Leo's house. The last one it could be is you haven't played darts three times for three golden walnuts. That's one that a lot of people miss because they only do it once and assume that was it. Finding beans for the Keys crop mission can be difficult. The most efficient way to get as many beans as possible is first, open any geodes you already have. Second, cut down any trees. And third would be fishing, which you can do an infinite amount of time and doesn't require any prep. Also, don't believe what the wiki says. There is no chance to get key beans from cutting weeds. Also, if you know that you're going to end up failing, keep your beans. They'll carry over to the next time you try the challenge. When trying to get your friendship up with everyone, the dwarf and Sandy both love every single movie that can possibly play. They're just happy to spend time with you. Also, if you're looking through the snacks and you see the star drop sorbet, it is also loved by every character other than Leo and Krobus. Now, if you chose the Joja route, you will always have the option for Joja corn as a snack. While it may be comforting to always have that option to choose it, it is in fact disliked by every single character other than Shane and Pam. This is another tip that while it's not useful for perfection, I get asked about it a lot. Where do you get your cat ears? Every time you get an in-game achievement, which is on this star collection here, a new hat will be added to the hat mouse. This is where you'll find most of the hats in the game, and for the cat ears, you need to do the achievement, the beloved farmer, which is reach 10 hearts with eight people. All right, this last one is a bit of a meta tip, but if you only have a few items left to collect and you have no clue how to obtain them, check the wiki. There's guides that show the entire collection list and you just need to click on the one you're missing and you'll be sent to the page for it. Yes, there's a page for every single item. It lists where it can be found, who it can be gifted to, 
absolutely everything. I'm told a lot that I'm just taking information from the wiki and putting it into a video format. That's because the wiki has like everything. If I ever find anything that's not on the wiki, I immediately use it in a video because it's so rare. On top of that, this is just one of those games that sometimes, like if you don't want to use the wiki, it's not a big deal. But it is very useful to just have the wiki open on a window next to your game and have free access to it because there's a lot of little secrets, a lot of hidden details that the average player just never sees. Anyway, that'll do it. Hopefully this helps you out on your journey to perfection. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next one and good night.